Hello friends, welcome back. Today I'm talking about how a toxic relationship can actually rip open that band-aid of childhood trauma. Now that can sound like a pretty graphic uh, explanation and that's exactly what can happen. So in this video, I wanna talk about how that happens, what it looks like, and more importantly, what you can do about it if you feel like this resonates with you. Okay, so that being said, let's dive in. So when I'm talking about childhood trauma, I, it can be from anything. It can be if you had parents that were battling addictions, parents that were emotionally unavailable, or parents that had a personality disorder, a cluster B personality disorder like borderline personality or narcissistic personality disorder. If you grew up in those environments, life wasn't safe. On top of it not being safe, when you're a child living in those environments, you aren't loved unconditionally and you aren't accepted as your authentic self. And so what happens in this kind of environment in childhood is that it's extremely painful to be rejected by a parent, okay, but for being yourself. If you're happy and you're shamed, that is extremely painful. If you are expressing a perspective and you are shamed and ridiculed and emotionally punished, then there's a tremendous amount of pain. And a child, to deal with that kind of pain, divorces pieces of themselves to try to make the parent happy. Because if being happy is dangerous, the child stops being happy to please the parent and try to get the love they need. Because in those years, it's not just love that's on the line, but it's survival. Like that parent is responsible for your survival. So the child separates from their authentic pieces and stifles a lot of the pain, the abandonment wounds, the fear, all those intense emotions that are coming up because of the abuse and neglect, they get stifled in the child. Now, this is where a lot of people say, oh, children are so resilient. Look, they're fine, but look at how much that child can handle. They look fine. And that irritates me because it's not that the child is fine. It's that because those emotions are so intense and they're too intense for that child to handle, the child has had to compartmentalize them, hide them from their conscious mind, stifle them into the subconscious. And so, yeah, the child does look fine, but just because trauma is out of sight doesn't mean that it's out of mind. So the trauma beliefs that were formed because of that chaotic, unhealthy um, upbringing that the child had to undergo, that those traumatic beliefs stay in the nervous system. Now, sometimes, sometimes those trauma beliefs go dormant and they are literally really feel as if they're out of sight and out of mind and as if they have no effect on you okay this can sometimes happen if you leave that toxic environment and now you're in a healthier environment where you are able to develop other beliefs and that's a beautiful thing but here's what i wish i knew about trauma when i was a kid because when I was 16 years old, I ran away from home and I had the opportunity to live with an amazing family that taught me how to have different beliefs. Okay, my trauma beliefs that I am unworthy, I am not enough, I am less than, I am bad, there's something wrong with me. All those beliefs that were instilled in me and when I was a child, were upgraded because of this change in environment. Like I remember, I'm not gonna say her name for reasons of um, privacy, but this family that took me in when I was 16 years old, the mom could see that I just had no self-esteem and I just couldn't see anything good in myself. She would literally put me in front of a mirror and tell me to say things like, I am enough, I am a good person, I am beautiful while I was looking at myself. And in the beginning, I couldn't do it. And then I would just cry and she would cry with me. And she put her arm around me and say, Michelle. And then she would tell me how she would see me. Well, this change in environment helped me to upgrade my beliefs to start seeing myself differently. However, 
the wounds from the past weren't completely healed. They were dormant. They became dormant and my life began to change. I began to see myself differently. I began to create the life that I wanted and it was amazing. But somewhere along the way, because the wounds from the past were just dormant, they weren't healed, they were dormant. They were locked away in my subconscious. I didn't even know they were still there. One day I was in a relationship with someone and it woke up a shame wound. And that's the part that I'm talking about it with the title of this video, how a, a toxic relationship can rip open the band-aid of childhood trauma. And the reason is, is because even though I was changing who I was seeing myself to be in those late teen years, early twenties, um, I was doing so on a conscious level which is how it starts, but it didn't sink into the subconscious yet. It hadn't really, I hadn't upgraded the old beliefs. I was just on a conscious level learning how to see myself differently. Okay, so that being said, once that shame wound was open, all of a sudden, all of the old beliefs from childhood kicked on with an intensity that was impossible to put back into the box, so to speak. It was like the trauma was like, okay, I'm still here. And I refuse to get back in that, in that compartmentalized place in your mind. You need to deal with it. Now, unfortunately, I didn't know what was going on. So when that happens, when a toxic relationship opens up the wounds from the past, and especially if that toxic relationship is with somebody that likes to change your reality and likes to use your wounds against you and you don't understand what's going on that person can convince you that all of the problems that are taking place in the relationship are your fault because look at you look at how you're acting and you know you're acting different you know you're not being yourself and it's and you're having a hard time understanding what's going on okay when that happens, what's really going on is that your old wounds that, that were from the past, and we love to think the past, we can just leave it behind. But when it comes to trauma, we can't because a toxic relationship can open the door to them. And when that happens, you will find yourself struggling to feel like yourself. You will find yourself struggling to understand why you're having these strange reactions why your thinking is so foggy and you're unable to really be grounded in your thoughts, in your body, in your emotions. And here's the other thing that happens. Okay, when that band-aid is ripped open and now your childhood trauma is now present because this toxic relationship reminded you, and I'll talk about that in a second, but it reminded you of that old wound. You will do things that don't make logical sense. So let's kind of shift into understanding why that childhood trauma can get kicked on like that. Okay. So when you experience trauma, trauma beliefs, right? Because of a relationship, somebody in your family, a caregiver made you believe horrible, painful things about yourself. And if it's been um, dormant inside of you, you can be around people and that trauma is still out of sight, out of mind, but the nervous system remembers everything. Your subconscious remembers everything as if it happened yesterday. It remembers the amount of data and information that your subconscious can remember and um, keep filed away compared to your conscious mind is just an enormous amount of data, right? Consciously, we're not thinking about all that, but that doesn't mean it's not there in the mind. It's just in your subconscious mind. And so a toxic relationship, if they have something in them that reminds your nervous system of the person that inflicted the trauma in the first place, that's what opens the door to the trauma. That's what causes that Band-Aid to be peeled off because your nervous system is like, oh, this is a similarity. This person that's hot and cold is reminding me of in childhood the conditional love 
that you went through and that all that shame that you experienced, maybe, and this is your nervous system thinking, okay, maybe this is an opportunity to, since this is a similar, since this is a similarity, maybe this time we can get this stuff healed. Maybe this time, all the shame that's there, if we can get this relationship right, then we'll be healed. Now, those thoughts are not taking place on a conscious level. They are taking place on an unconscious level in your nervous system. And it's based on something in psychology called repetition compulsion, where we will tend to repeat similar circumstances or similar patterns in our life until the wounds are healed and resolved. It's something inside of us will push us to want to stay in a relationship that's toxic. This is where the logic and the um, illogical behaviors are kind of in conflict because logically, on a logical conscious level, you might be saying to yourself, this relationship is bad for me. There's something wrong. This doesn't feel good. I'm suffering because of this relationship. And yet you'll struggle to leave because of this compulsion inside that's coming from your wounded self that is still very much alive and active in your subconscious mind needs healing. Now, the problem is because it's coming from your past childhood wounds. And in childhood, the wounds were inflicted outside of self. And because in childhood, you needed somebody, you needed your caregiver to mirror you, to validate you, to help you resolve the intense emotions that were coming up in your body. Like you couldn't do it on your own. Absolutely not. You were a child. So because that piece of you really needed something outside of self, when it gets woken up because of a toxic relationship when you're an adult, it thinks that it needs that person to heal the wound. And that's where you'll feel the fight between your conscious mind and your subconscious, where your conscious mind is like, I need to get out of this relationship. This is really damaging me. And your subconscious is pushing you to stay in hopes that this time you'll get things right and you'll feel enough and worthy and lovable. So it is so confusing. It is so confusing when complex PTSD, it's almost like when that switch gets turned on in your body, especially after it was dormant for a while, you can feel like you're going crazy because consciously you're saying, why am I doing this? And yet at the same time, you're like, okay, I know I'm saying this. Why am I not stopping? And at that moment, it can feel like you're losing your mind. And I just want you to know, I just want you to understand that it's not that you're crazy. It's that your childhood trauma has kicked on. The wound, the door to that wound or those wounds has been open. And even though in the past you were able to close it and allow it to go dormant for a period of time, once that door is open again, it will refuse to allow you to shove that trauma back in, compartmentalize it and forget about it. It now is demanding healing, but it thinks again, it needs it from the other person. So let's shift into what to do about it. If this is resonating, okay, if this is resonating, first of all, I want you to understand again, I know I said it already, but you are not crazy. You are not losing your mind. We talk about cell memory. Okay, so trauma gets stuck in us on a cellular level. And so when it gets woken up, we can't get to it by logic alone. We have to work through the trauma. There's that saying, we have to feel it to heal it. Doesn't mean that we marinate in it, but we do have to do the inner work to work through trauma. So I'm gonna mention a few things that are helpful. The first, is really learning how to be comfortable with what's going on in your body. 
there's nervous system dysregulation taking place when that trauma comes back online, so to speak. Your body can go into fight or flight and you can get stuck in it. You can get stuck dissociated or you can get stuck in high anxiety, right? But you get stuck in a nervous system state that is very uncomfortable. So part of working through it is understanding what happened in childhood, kind of putting the pieces together, then working with your nervous system. Another thing that's important to do is reparenting. The pieces of us that got stuck because of the trauma need to be reparented so that we can grow emotionally so that we can process that trauma and release it from the body. There's also working through the coping skills that come up because of the trauma, right? We develop coping skills. Maybe we isolate. Maybe we maybe we get super busy, right? So that we don't have to feel what's going on or so we don't have to think about it. Maybe we jump from relationship to relationship, hoping that someone outside of self, again, that's what the trauma wants you to do. Think that someone outside of self is going to help you. There's a lot of different coping skills that the brain and body develop so that you don't have to see the trauma, but they keep you stuck. So working through it or recovering from it is about learning what those coping skills are and learning healthier coping skills. And then something else that's really powerful and helpful is getting the body and the mind and the nervous system regulated. So that sounds like a lot, and I'm not going to lie, it is, right? When trauma comes back online, when that Band-Aid is ripped open, it does not do so gently. It demands your attention. And doing the inner work, um, I'm not going to say it's easy. It's challenging. But I will say this. If you're willing to do the inner work, the benefit is getting you back, the real you, not your protective self, not the self that's stuck in fight or flight, not the self that's dependent on the external for validation, but the real you. You get the real you back. You resolve the trauma on a subconscious level, and then you start living life without the side effects of the trauma. So it's time. It's work, it's effort, but the benefit is that you then come back into your body as your authentic self and you create the life that you really want. So it is so worth it. If you're struggling, remember that in the description box below, I have a lot of resources. I have self-paced video courses, as well as the Thriver School of Transformation, which is a monthly membership where we meet online every week and we do the inner work together so that you don't have to do it alone. So make sure you check out the resources that are in the description box below.